Thanks to all of you for joining us at the Centre for Christian Spirituality. This Sunday when we share the Gospel reading for the 19th Sunday in Ordinary Time, the Gospel continuing the, the stories from the Gospel of Matthew. Immediately he made the disciples get into the boat and go ahead to the other side while he dismissed the crowds. After he had dismissed the crowds, he went up the mountain by himself to pray. When evening came, he was there alone. But by this time, the boat, battered by the waves, was far from the land, for the wind was against them. And early in the morning, he came walking towards them on the lake. But when the disciples saw him walking on the lake, they were terrified, saying, It is a ghost! And they cried out in fear. But immediately Jesus spoke to them and said, Take heart, it is I, do not be afraid. Peter answered him, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. He said, Come. So Peter got out of the boat, started walking on the water and came towards Jesus. But when he noticed the strong wind, he became frightened and beginning to sink, he cried out, Lord, save me. Jesus immediately reached out his hand and caught him, saying to him, you of little faith, why did you doubt? And when they got into the boat, the wind ceased and those in the boat worshipped him, saying, Truly, you are the Son of God. There's been a number of, of sea crossings in which things have happened, and they all have that, that common theme, I think. There's the, when Jesus was asleep in the boat, and um, the winds blew up, and he got up, and, and they asked him, and he calmed everything. Uh, and then, when they got to shore, Jesus said, a ye of little faith. And what would they have done if they'd had faith? They'd have been still in the storm with the Jesus who controls the storm and been saved by, by him. And I think that's the same idea coming across here, that um, recognising that Jesus is the one who has that power and putting our trust in the Lord. Um, you often find in the Gospels, do not be afraid. And in a sense, that's do not doubt, in a way. And that's an emphasis that I think is coming through here. Um, there are two things in this incident um, which Matthew adds. Um, the first is the reference to Peter. Right? The idea of Peter walking on the water is only in Matthew. And of course, Matthew has a um, special interest in Peter and includes things that um, are not in the other Gospels. But he just doesn't include the flattering things. If you were writing about the Pope, you might just include all the good things. But again, Peter is shown to be the one that um, was of little faith. And the second thing that's proper to him is the confession um, at the end, that truly you are the Son of God, that um, uh, an acknowledgement um, who Jesus is and an acknowledging his power and perhaps sort of realising that, you know, they were of little faith, that they should have recognise one who was so important and so powerful would have been able to sustain them uh, in the difficulty and sustain Peter uh, in his difficulty. I have to say I absolutely love Peter. I, I love Peter. Thank you Matthew for including <laughs> Peter in the story because Really, if it wasn't for Peter, I don't think I'd have a bridge that was walking me towards Jesus because I just love the way Peter, I, you know, goes out there and doesn't quite get it right. He's the one that decides he's going to walk on the water too. I just think it's just so human to want to do this and then starts to doubt, you know, doubt mm. himself, doubt God, doubt everyone, <laughs> starts yeah. to sink. Uh, all I can say is I'm just struck every time I hear Peter and hear Peter's struggle, I just say, 
Thank you. Thank you, God. Thank you, Matthew. Thank you, Peter. Because if it wasn't for you in the story, I don't think I'd have such a, a strong pull into the gospel stories often. I just... Mm -hmm. it's, it's masterful writing, I have to say. At the very least, it's masterful. I, I think it's a, a gospel passage for our times. Living in this time of the pandemic, we can find ourselves in the boat, tossed this way, that way, and every other way, and just wondering where can we find a way out of this? Who is going to be the one that, that does something that's going to kind of restore our hope? And uh, so it's a, it's a real, um, yeah, as I say, a story for our, for our time, and how much one needs to hear those words, do not be afraid. You know, let not your hearts be troubled. Trust in me, you know, from elsewhere in the Gospels. So that's what I, I'm just sitting with at the moment, thinking, yes, really pertinent for now, challenging me in the context of now, where is my faith? Well, where is your faith? Where has the story of today's Gospel led you? Where is it inviting you? What's it asking of you to reflect upon? You've heard the three of us share something of our response to an initial reading of, of the Gospel passage today. Take some time now yourselves. Reflect on what you have heard and what this Gospel story is inviting you to. Well, welcome back after a period of reflection and let's begin as we began earlier today by reflecting once more on the Gospel assigned to this Sunday. Immediately Jesus made the disciples get into the boat and go on ahead to the other side while he dismissed the crowds. And after he had dismissed the crowds he went up the mountain by himself to pray. When evening came, he was there alone. But by this time, the boat, battered by the waves, was far from the land, for the wind was against them. And early in the morning, he came walking towards them on the lake. But when the disciples saw him walking on the lake, they were terrified, saying, It is a ghost. And they cried out in fear. But immediately Jesus spoke to them and said, Take heart, it is I, do not be afraid. Peter answered him, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. Jesus said, Come. So Peter got out of the boat, started walking on the water, and came towards Jesus. But when he noticed the strong wind, he became frightened, and beginning to sink, he cried out, Lord, save me. Jesus immediately reached out his hand and caught him, saying to him, You of little faith, why did you doubt? When they got into the boat, the wind ceased, and those in the boat worshipped him, saying, Truly you are the Son of God. For me, it's don't doubt have the faith, believe, believe, keep believing. So I'm going to try very hard this week to stay into that closed zone um, and believe. Like you, John, I, I picked up on the, the situation of our world today, not so much with the pandemic, but the situation of the church, which is really mm -hmm. like a storm. So many things are happening and yeah. so many movements are taking place. And you sometimes feel you don't want to stick your head out because you're going to sink. Mm -hmm. and, and really, I think I would look to, the, to recognising the Lord, the Son of God, who can give us the power to walk on the waters, mm -hmm. you know, to really do what needs to be done in this turmoil that is taking place in the church. Mm -hmm. 
I guess mine's a, a little similar to that. I, I did use the word pan, pa, pandemic, but church comes into that too at, yeah. at this time. And, and I do feel often tossed this way and that way. So the real challenge perhaps I place before myself this week is to ask myself the question and to respond to it, where do I find Jesus and his words of reassurance as I encounter these moments of, of doubt, of frustration on the storm-tossed sea of life, be it in church or in the world. Well, we've tried to be honest in sharing with you our own response to the gospel and to make it a, a living word so that we write the next part of the story we've heard in the gospel by the way we live our own lives. We invite you now, yourselves, to take a few moments to, to reflect and to uh, allow a challenge to surface through the words of the gospel you've heard that will take you a step further in your life, your Christian way of life and your relationship with Jesus through the coming week. Sometimes it's really hard, isn't it, to, to sort of allow ourselves to be placed in the hands of God and to allow God to hold us safely and, and gently there in the palm of God's hands. But that's what we do now. We need that security of knowing God is with us. So let's take a moment to pray to the God who is ever close to us, always with us, to be the God who walks with us uh, and enabling us to respond to the intention that's ours over the coming days. A privilege for us indeed to know that you were there sharing with us, joining with us in prayer and reflection on the Gospel of the Sunday. Thank you for being with us. We look forward to joining you and you joining us next week. But for now, let's close our time together um, by hearing the, the prayer that is prayed as the opening prayer of the Sunday, uh, yeah, of this Sunday. Almighty, ever-living God, whom, taught by the Holy Spirit, we dare to call our Father, Bring, we pray, to perfection in our hearts the spirit of adoption as your sons and daughters, that we may merit to enter into the inheritance which you have promised. Through Christ our Lord. 